what we're going to cover today uh, in our uh, webinar. You know, to make sure that you guys can minimize your signal integrity issues and get designs and systems that work right the first time. So first, the uh, basics, the definition. So propagation delay uh, is the time taken by a signal to propagate over a unit length of the transmission line. So you can estimate the total signal propagation time by multiplying the propagation delay by the transmission line length. So propagation delay is expressed in the time per unit length, so nanosecond or picosecond per inch. And propagation delay is directly proportional to the trace length and inversely proportional to the signal speed. So propagation delay, of course, is important. It can cause uh, data disruption in the system and it impacts you know, overall uh, signal integrity. So the critical uh, factors are responsible for propagation delay. So picking the right material, having the right dielectric constant. If you do anything kind of greater than four, you'll definitely encounter some issues. Uh, and then, you know, you want to worry about, you need to worry about your parasitic capacitance. Uh, so it increases the capacitive load of the signal and leads to greater signal delay. And then, of course, uh, as the question poll said, uh, impedance uh, matching is important. So non-uniform impedances between the driver and the transmission line leads to signal reflections um, and prolonged propagation delay. And then, yeah, so signal reflections, basically. So how does the dielectric material affect the propagation delay? So signal dispersion is a phenomenon in which high-speed signals experience distortion, and it occurs when the signal uh, components travel at different speeds through a medium, and so that will increase the propagation delay. So the picking the right substrate becomes really important. So materials with inconsistent dielectric constants tend to exhibit more signal dispersion and impedance discontinuities. So higher the decay, and I guess we are saying as a team, greater than four, uh, based on data, exhibit greater signal losses. So this can negatively impact the overall performance of your system. In terms of picking the materials, uh, we tried to group some materials into common buckets uh, and you can take a look, you know, on the right, we've listed out some common materials that we stock on a regular basis and how they perform. So some low dispersion materials include the Rogers, the Panasonic Megatron, um, et cetera. So you can always call us to see what we have in stock. You can always call us to help you uh, select the right materials. That's definitely the first step. I am not going to read this, but here's some more information for you. If you're interested, this is how you can manually calculate propagation delay. So manually calculating, and some of you answered that you do that, well, that's fantastic. Uh, we also have a tool that can help you quickly compute this, and, and we'll definitely go that go through that. So the difference between propagation delay and transmission delay. So propagation delay is determined by the physical length of the transmission line and the speed at which the electrical signal propagates through the medium, whereas transmission delay is the time required to transmit a specific amount of data through a trace. To calculate the transmission delay, you need to divide the data size by the data rate. So signal content impacts the transmission delay. However, it doesn't have any effect on the propagation delay. And here's a relation between, um, you know, your 
characteristic impedance and propagation delay. Um, they both depend on the physical length of the transmission line and capacitance per unit length of the transmission line. And if you vary the impedance, there can be a change in the propagation delay. You know, that being said, uh, we'll go through a quick demo of our tool. I think Pranav is going to do that. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so this is our uh, impedance calculator tool. So we have our impedance calculator tool, which is uh, based on the numerical solutions of Maxwell's equation, and it renders very accurate results for um, for manufacturing as well as for the uh, your design and layout purpose. So, uh, so we have um, different structures for you, like uncoated, coated microstrip, embedded and strip line, and also the um, the models like single ended differential pair we have coplanar and also without ground models and you can choose uh, whichever uh, is uh, applicable for your uh, application and once you have selected those we get a list of two uh, list of calculators um, depending on uh, um, what you have selected and how the dielectric construction is so we have a total of about 82 different models uh, which are which based on the orientation of the trace and the number of reference etc so you can check those out so once you have select uh, once you decide on uh, what's your geometry is you can click on the open button and the tool will open the that particular calculator will open so right now i have opened a, a coated microstrip single ended impedance calculator so here uh, first you'll see uh, the image of the geometry um you have a unit selection so you can either uh, by default it will be in mills but if you are working in a metric system you can choose uh, those units as well uh, you need to enter dielectric information and trace information so you need to enter like dielectric height dielectric constant as this is a coated uh, geometry you need to enter the coating parameters also uh, for trace information you need to give uh, the delta w which is difference between the top and bottom of the trace width and the trace thickness so here you can either enter a target uh, impedance or the trace width so let's say i need a 50 ohm line so i'll enter 50 and i'll say calculate w this will calculate the trace width for this 50 ohms and we have a calculated impedance and also we calculate what will be the propagation delay for this particular uh, geometry for this trace width so suppose if i change or uh, the trace width you can just do the sorry trace width. You just recalculate and it will recalculate the the calculated impedance and what is the propagation delay for this geometry for this trace width uh the units will be picoseconds per inch but like i said if you can change to uh, centimeters and the units will be picoseconds per centimeter so if you're working with metric you can uh, use uh, the metric units so this is for a single ended now if you look we also have a differential pair so we'll just quickly go through that as well so here i have taken example of a strip line differential pair model where you need to give uh, dielectric parameters for both uh, the above the uh, the dielectric which is above and below so h1 h2 and the di dielectric constant for the dielectric and the trace information as this is a differential pair you can give the separation or the trace plus separation now once you calculate for the differential pair we calculate both the odd mode propagation delay as well as the even mode propagation delay so as you know the differential pair you can have uh, both the models and both the uh, types and we calculate and display both even and odd mode uh, propagation delay so you can use those we also have other calculators along with the impedance so you can check those out as well like signal loss best parameters and cross stop so yeah um, thank you Oops. 
Uh, thanks, Parv. Yep. Uh, let me share my screen. You have to stop share, Parnov. Uh, yeah. You just go down to the green button, share screen, I think. <laughs> 